What it do, what it do, what it do. Welcome back to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your co-host, Joshua Meekins. And I, of course, like always, I am joined by the fantastic, amazing, and quite the personality, <laughs> Miss Amira Smith. You know, the, you know, <laughs> hey guys, I'm Amira Smith, co-host of the pod. And boy, there was so much shade laced in that <laughs> intro. It's, it's crazy. Well, I gotta let y'all. Like, so background, I found out literally two minutes before the, the show started that Amir is the youngest child, and it, it opened up my world to like so much information. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Josh is enjoying this so much. I, it's, it, 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 it finally, you know how like there's a puzzle piece, like when you're trying to figure people out, it's like, it's clicked it. I was like, oh, I get it. I get it now. <laughs> hey, yo, I, 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 I said, yo, so what What that mean? He's talking about some star of the show syndrome. Yeah, it's, it's, main, it's main character energy. You have main character energy. And I have to give it to you. Like, you, you got it. Like, it, that's just the way it is. So it just, it makes sense now. Cause I'm like, what about, I'm like, what about Amir? Like, I don't get it. This put it together. I was like, she has two other siblings and they're older and yeah, she's the only to. girl. So like, you know, the world's got to revolve around Amir for that. It has to, it has to. <laughs> I got two older brothers and um, they're three and four years older than me. Shout out Kari and Malik. And, um, you know, I mean, yeah, I was the baby. And, <laughs> and then I was the baby that was raised mostly with my mom, right? Mm. And so then when I was 10 and we all moved, they moved to um, Mansion. They left Logan and moved to, my brothers moved to Mansion with us. Um, we became one big happy family, you know? Then it's like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm the girl, I'm the baby. And, um, and then when they graduated high school, you know, so by the time I got to ninth grade, one yeah. was like, I think he was he in senior year because you're three years older so yeah he was out of he was out of high school mm -hmm. and then the other you know was like 11th 12th grade and so yeah i i remember when yeah i was in 11th grade like mm -hmm. my brothers used to give me money for like That's school dope. stuff and dudes yeah, yeah. and um snacks and then my one brother worked at the like well they both worked at franklin mills and i used to go to one's job and get free shoes and wow I, I see that's you know. <laughs> that's that's the luxury of being the youngest sibling i'm telling you it is it is I'm telling of, you. like your older siblings especially you got they'll buy stuff for you yeah. and, so um that's that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah so i can't i can't lie i did grow up a little and then it's like a little entitled a little entitled <laughs> and i always had cool jobs yeah and i oh you know I guess it's just, it's, it is, I guess it is as youngest child, it's like a different way of navigating. It, it, it was a little bad because it's like being the only girl. Yeah. You see live and in action rules that at your, at their age. Yeah. Didn't apply to them, mm -hmm. apply to you mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, well, they're not coming home with a baby. And I'm like, but, so they could go make babies. You know what I mean? But yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I thought she was going to say only child syndrome because it's like I be late to stuff and nah, like, nah, right. nah. So I, so I have, so I, I have two younger brothers. Shout out Josiah and Jomar. Jomar is the youngest, and everything you said, like, so, like, you know, we're all. I'm ten years older than he is, and then Josiah is five years younger than me, so we're all five years apart. And for Jomar, it's like you know, he needed basketball sneakers. I was buying him basketball sneakers when I had some money, like. He uh he used to come with me to like my college visits and stuff like that. So he got like a completely like different experience. So yeah. even when we all went to the same high school. So like he was basically like when he got to high school, they were like, Oh, we know your siblings. They did X, Y, and Z. So there was like expectations for him, but at the same time, everybody let him get away with everything because they knew he was he was good. He was good for it. Now that's true. And and, and it's like that change it's a it is a lot because even in relationships, like yeah. um when I was really young, it wasn't great. So like I had my son so young. So with yeah. like ease dad, I was so used to being around the guys that it was mm. almost like and siblings that it was it made I won't I, I probably I was young and I was stupid. So I gave mm. him probably a little bit too much leeway. Mm. And not and if you know when you're a teenager, you you could date somebody older and it's still like the flow of like what a teenager has going on. You know what I mean? And you yeah. think so where it's like where he was older and he should have had a lot more happening. Mm. It's like, oh, well, you're just looking at what phase you're in. But mm. then as I got older, 
it, I guess it does reflect relationships in a sense. Like, you know, because I'm, I am, I'm entitled a little bit and I expect not a mall. <laughs> I expect, you know what I mean? Yeah, I truly they, expect. It's like, um, and it's just simple stuff. Like yeah. I, and then, you know, I dated guys who they'd be like, don't you touch that door handle. And then after a while, they, they get mad. I remember, you know, my one ex, I would be walking, mm. we'd be walking to the store and I'd be, we'd be talking about like, you know, I just don't understand. And the door would come and I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> and he would be like, you don't got to look like that. I said, what? I said, you don't let me open the door myself. He used to be like, but you, you stood, you stopped like I'm the servant. And I'm like, bruh, like, wait, I just fall. <laughs> I just thought you was going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I just thought you was going to get it. And I was letting you have a moment to get it. Man. But um, yeah, but it's the one great thing, though, is that me and my brothers, we're all creatives. That's you know cool. what I mean? We're all yeah. creatives. Um, we're all visual artists having that blueprint. And it kind of, that makes it easy when you are a creative person. I mean, because yeah. I've been, I've been writing and drawing since before, since I was, I, I have, I guess I started drawing it too. Yeah. And like starting to really write at three, but drawing all my childhood books, every page, they look terrible because every page had pictures drawn on the margins. And yeah. I just, I, especially picture books, I would yeah. be trying to draw the character on the same page. Really? Um, and then it turned into where I started winning art competitions when I was in first grade. And then, you know, but it's, I had competition at home. Or like, how can my brother Corey draw that good? And I'm like, if he could draw that good, I could too. Yeah. So that's kind of the entry into like creative, like, but yeah, yeah. I that's guess. really dope. I did. I, yeah. I, I, this is all new information for me, and I know Amira well. I just I did not know that. That's so cool. Yeah, I yeah my older siblings, and I'm I am a younger sibling, and it's like, oh, they. I looked that up about like what do they say about youngest siblings? Yeah, I was like, you need to do a quick Google search. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I'm like the youngest. I'm the only creative in my family. I, other in my immediate family, my little cousin is an artist who's an amazing artist. Shout out Amani Graham. Um, but other than that, like we're the only two creatives in our whole family. Everybody else is an analytical, little thinker. I'm like, oh, ugh, are you really doing a Google search? Oh, yeah, they said we, we certain personality traits, we receive special treatment because the birth yeah. order is not yeah. a medical, psychological. I don't know, we get special treatment. I mean, <laughs> yeah, a little bit because it just, you know, you're the baby. You'd be like, yeah, mm, like you're the baby. But brother, can I get Listen, that? We ain't, we ain't hating. Us older siblings, we're not going to hate on it. We understand the game. The game is the game. You feel me? The game is the game. It's just, it's just, a, it's just one more person to baby you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Like, I'm not going to baby my older brothers, yeah. but they would baby me. And I'd be uh -huh. like, man, I wish I had that. And they'd be like, all right, whatever. I'll, I'll buy you. it for you. And I'd be like, thank you. You know? Exactly. Exactly. It, you know, I think about it, it was bad. Because I used to, it, we used to get, I remember we used to get snacks. And after a while, yeah. my brother Malik used to be like, all right, enough of this. We used to get snacks and we get the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'd eat mine real fast mm. and then be mooching off of theirs. Mm. Like, well, what about, I, well, can, can I have some? And he'd be like, you had the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but because I was the baby for so long, I used to be like, here, here, yep. you know, and I'd yep. be, you know, just begging and child. <laughs> <laughs> I got her. She going to be in a rabbit hole that's, the rest of the night. Yeah, that's crazy because it makes sense of my like, hey, you can't hurt the ex. Like I'll ask, I'll ask anybody just about for anything because it's, it's just like well they're gonna tell me no and okay I won't yeah. die you know so mm. yeah so welcome back um, <laughs> <laughs> so we go I guess we'll we'll talk about like what's 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 up with this week you know what yeah. I mean what's how was your week my week was cool it was kind of a blur um yeah it's kind of a blur. It's interesting because then we're moving to a weekly format. I'm kind of like, yeah. how do those other pods have so much to talk about in a week? Because I be feeling like, dang, I feel like I just seen you. <laughs> and we just was talking about some stuff. Um, more or less just um, work stuff, right? Yeah. My um, my client, which my clients, my good friends, um, the R&B group Aries, um, I came on to help them get the word out about their EP. In a sense, some public relations work. Their EP dropped on Sunday. It sounds amazing. It's nine tracks. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, and just been sending it around to some folks I know and some people like, you know, especially people who are vested in R and B music, um, in the industry. And hearing a lot of a lot of cool stuff. A lot of people being like, yo, like I love them. Like people who already know of them or people who were didn't know at all and they gave mm -hmm. it a listen. They were like, My God, their harmonies are so incredible. Um, 
but really great, great feedback. So it's like um, moving forward. I went to a Grammy party with Ayana yesterday, um, Ayana of Aries, and that was pretty cool. It was um, a back, like a block party style joint for the Philadelphia Recording Academy chapter. So I was her guest, but like, you know, the creative community here in Philly, I know a lot of folks. Um, so met some good people and already knew some folks. So, you know, Tara Weck, she gave a, a talk there, mm-hmm. which was really, really cool. Like a fireside chat with her best friend, who's also a journalist. Wow. Um, so that was cool. That was really cool. And then like performances by like Kenya Vaughn and it's really dope. Like a good, I mean, it was, it was hot outside, but like it was half in the venue. It was at punchline. So it was half inside and then mm, the other parts outside. outside. Yeah. So it was, it was just a vibe. And um, anytime I could get around creative community, I, I take the chance, especially because it's like reconnecting with people, catching up with folks. On, um, and, you know, my other client is the, the fund for the school district of Philly. And we work a lot with the the um, music programs of the school district mm. and the head of that department, Frank Mikos, he was there. So we like chatted for a little bit. So that was like, that was cool. Uh, what else in the week? The week, the week. I was like, if y'all don't follow Amir on social media, like, she does post like really cool stuff from like the events and stuff like that she goes to. Yeah, all my stories, which yeah. is like, I got to get better. I got to get better about head and stuff to highlights. And I, I got to catch up mm. on actual posting, right? Yeah. Um, But between Josh with this whole main, main, uh, telling me about this sibling, this youngest sibling syndrome. <laughs> and then me and Wallow talked yesterday, just like, yeah. the, um, I asked them about, you know, some specifics some work stuff and say yeah. like, you know, make it easier. He just called me and then we were talking and then he kind of read me too. He was just like, you do so much for everybody else in the way that you show up. And he was like, you add value everywhere. He yeah. said, um, you add value to every room. He said, you will attend people's events and pull up to yeah. their stuff and you'll add value just by being there. Yeah. He said, and then when people, you work with people, he was like, you always help other people get their stuff going and, and moving and help them set everything up as far as in like business and their decks, everything. He said, but you, you won't do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> he wasn't lying though. I was just like, damn, you ain't telling me nothing I don't know. But for sure, he was just like, He's like, you're supposed to have an agency. He's like, you're like, mirror, you're a movement. You don't like, yeah. like, you just won't. And I'm like, you, you're right. So between that, and then I'm like, how you, is it, is it the main character syndrome <laughs> making me think that like somebody else should do it for me? But the thing is, is that I just got to hire someone, right? Mm. There is, well, shoot, my, um, <laughs> is in my, my stack here mm. on my, um, that my laptop is on. Um, damn, I want to show you guys this book real bad, but my whole situation is going to get rocky because I have such a little janky little setup, but it's a book called Who Not How. And matter of fact, I'm going to just Google it. It's a really good book. Um, it was recommended to me and I, I feel like I've brought it up before um, that one of my friends had um, like, rec- like recommended to me. It's like the formula to achieve bigger goals. And it's all about Sometimes, especially solopreneurs, we'll sit back and we don't, we think of something, we think of a plan, a project, anything, and we start thinking of the how to get it done. And sometimes that can be a hindrance to us when we think of it that right away, in the sense of we, we get granular, we'll get into the minutia of the how, where the truth is, it's like, it's probably not best that you try to take on the whole project by yourself anyway. Like even when I look at like my client work and honestly, so, okay. The week part of the week too, was that I had one of these Instagram ads pop up and that read me for filth too. Right. So this is like a week of reckoning. It was a, a, a post about procrastination. It's like a um, guy named Tim Hahn. And he had this post about, and he, he wants you to buy his workshop, but like, I, I literally sat there and watched the whole thing. Like he's an author, um, world renowned human behavior expert, international speaker. It was about procrastination. And I know I struggle with like executive function and like, um, prioritizing which tasks have the task, which one to start when I'm, when will I start it, you know? And if I had to switch all those things, but he was talking about procrastination and how it's you you're, you're looking at the future self you want, but you keep checking in with a past self mm. in the sense of, you know, where your level of achievement or success or whatever has been. And you're letting that like keep giving you like kind of like reasons to sabotage your future self. Yeah. And also 
it like brings you back to a level because human like the human existence how do you say the first rule of existence is self-preservation yeah your body your mind all your cells want to stay safe and then when you're looking at high achievement or success and it's uncertain there's a level of like like not being safe that you literally do feel like you know you feel it in your body you feel it in your nervous system procrastination keeps you in that same familiar place that mm -hmm. feels safe and you know all those things so that was I can't even remember what night it was. Was it Monday or one of those? That led to me having a meltdown. Like, I'm sabotaging myself. You know what I mean? Because it's like I'm supposed to be a rich woman and I know it, you know? And and because I'm the I'm I'm a resource for so many people in so many ways, right? So then I'm like, okay. Then, you know, me and um the call wallow, and then what mm -hmm. you said, and I was just like, Yeah, I um so who, not how. Yeah, I will sometimes think of like taking on a client because I have, I have at least three to four clients who want to, or people who are potential clients who reached out to me to work yeah. with me. You know what I mean? But I'm so stuck in the how of the clients and the things I'm managing right now where, yeah, I probably should hire somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And taking on future work is really just a matter of pricing, getting at least 50% of that deposit, you know, or, you know, if you do your RFP, yep. getting something secure, hiring that person. Cause I'm, cause then, you know, you think I'm hiring someone to say, well, how am I going to pay them? And it's like, you'll have the money in hand as long as you successfully do the pitch and you still the deal. So it's just, exactly. you know, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. And it, I, first of all, I would like to say wallows, right? hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. And I, we had a very similar weeks and I, I'll, 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 I'll let you know in a second. I want to make sure you're done. We had very similar. No, weeks. I'm, I'm done. It just, it, it, it makes me think about what me and we, me and you were talking about. And we're talking about, okay, this and that. And well, okay, we'll do these episodes in person. And you're like, oh, let's get somebody to pay. And I'm like, man, we're going to have the money to pay them. But I can mm -hmm. see in that moment, you were like, well, where is that? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we get the ads. So then, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, but in constant, like, even if I was to hire someone yeah. to sell the freaking ads and that's just what they do and they take 15 to 20%, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, we'll talk about that. But so what was your, how was your week, <laughs> Josh? My week was fantastic. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It was, it started off bad and it has now gotten to a really good point. Um, so for those who don't know, my wife and my daughter were both sick. I think I said that last time, they were both sick. I ended up catching what they got and I was down. So I, I got a chance to like binge watch, catch up on a bunch of shows. So I finished Supercell. We hadn't talked about that. I started um, Ghostbusters and a few other shows. Um, so it was cool to kind of like just sit and be calm for a little bit. And then Sunday, Monday, I had the same moment you had. And which I was saying, like, I don't know if it was like the stars aligned, but I had this moment where I was like, I got through my day. I knew I was going to get a whole bunch of stuff done. And I was like, I'm going to get this work done tonight. Like, I, had, I had set aside some time to get some work done. So I put my daughter to sleep, go to bed, and, and I put my daughter to sleep. And the, the trick is you try not to fall asleep with the baby. If you fall asleep with the baby, you're usually shot. Like, you're asleep that whole time. I fell asleep with the baby. So I went to sleep at 7. I woke up at 10.30. And I woke up crank, cranky, grumpy, and angry. So I go into the room. I see my wife. I'm like, yo, I fell asleep. I'm pissed. I'm going to just go to bed. So I take myself to bed. I'm sitting in the bed and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, it literally self-talk. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, get up, do the stuff you said you were going to do. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but this will be 1% closer to where you want to get to. Cool. Dragged myself out of bed and probably stayed up doing work until 3 a.m. But when I tell you, I sat there and like got the things done. So I like, I, I, I just a little bit insight. Like, so I've kind of taken up the mantra of the not procrastination stuff. So I really have been trying to like get things in order. So like I've been trying to make an operational budget for my J Media. What does that look like? How am I going to do that? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So you know, like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But all I know is if I try and I fail, I'm closer. I try, I fail, I'm closer. And I've just been really like taking on that mantra. So I also started shooting uh, content for a gym that I go to. You know, I'm not the best editor, and I talk about that all the time. But I'm trying, I'm failing, I'm getting better. I'm trying, I'm failing, I'm getting better. And when I tell you, like, it feels so good to just create and not have to worry about like, yo, this has to be perfect. Or like even coming into our weekly episodes, like, hey, the doc is not done. Let's put one together real quick. And now let's jump into the episode to make sure we have content. I've just started feeling so good about like 
creating, making the mistakes, not having something, figuring it out, but getting closer to the end. You know what I'm saying? Like getting closer to the end goal and elevating. So, but to, to your point, I've had the, I had this really crazy conversation with God, I had two really crazy conversations with God. One was um, saying like, okay, cool. I'm going, the person that I am right now, it can't be the person and is not allowed to enter my next phase of life because the person that's required in that stage, I have to become that person. So if I would have stayed in that bed, I would have been the same person I was before. You know what I'm saying? I had to get up and do something different and become a different person to go to this next phase and my thinking has to change. So like, that was like one whole thing that kind of really like opened up my brain a little bit because I can't be doing the same stuff I was before and expecting the same thing, you know, expecting something new to happen. I got to do change my actions in order to, you know, become something different. The second was I was really having a hard time accepting and like questioning, like what, what my future was going to be like. I, I was, the story is I was driving in my car to Chick-fil-A to grab food for the family real quick. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. And I was in the car listening to some gospel and I was like, you know, God, if you're going to take care of me, like, just give me, give me a little sign. Like, just let me know something that's really going to go pop. Um, so I go to Chick-fil-A, get the bag, come home. And I'm like, you know, I'm telling Shadir, like, yeah, we got the stuff, whatever, taking the stuff with the bag. And I'm going, oh, there's an extra chicken nugget in here. That's so crazy. And Shadir's like, why is why is that crazy? I was like, I was in the car literally asking God for a sign that he's going to take care of us. Like, you know, make sure everything's good. And there's an extra chicken nugget in his bag. I was like, if that ain't no sign, if that, is, if that isn't a sign, like, I don't know what is. It just was like a really like reassuring feeling that made me feel like everything's going to be fine. Take the risk. Go be scared. Do what you got to do. And I'm going to take care of you. So like that's I when I tell you like the end of this week, I've been feeling like just do it. Just do do the stuff. God has told me to shoot the podcast, make the content, apply to the jobs, do you know, make the budgets. I'm going to take care of the rest. Listen, you know, man, you can hear me in this mic. Yeah, I can hear you clear. That's so weird because it's all the lights are orange. Oh, because you have the uh, headphone button. If you press the button again, it'll turn green. You can hear me. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> we had some mic issues before we got on here. We just I, um, troubleshooting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's a big thing that we were talking about too. Like, um, mm-hmm. because like in me and Wallow's conversation, you know, just how I talk, like I'd be over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. It'd be like okay. all over the place. So we were having a conversation about a lot of things. And then that came up because it was he's like somebody asked about me. And it mm. was like if I could sum up a mirror, boom, she does all this. She has value. She's this. And he was like, um, cause he was like, you're one of the smartest people I know. He was mm-hmm. like, but you know, you don't do the, you don't do the things for yourself that you do for others that would really solidify so much for you. Um, but he was like, you know, he made a, well, he made like an example. He was like, man, so many people use as they, as they was, I don't know how much percentage of the brain that they say that humans use. Right. He was like, if it's 25%. He was like, Mira, I may only use 3%. He said, because I just, I don't overthink. He said, I just do action. I do it. And I told him though, I was like, you're a master of who, not how. Because you're one person, you can't do everything. You know what I mean? It is it is hard to build the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Work it, do the thing. And then, and I, I encountered that one time with a, um, a production company that I was going to like work for one time. And they were going to have me be the relationships person because they had that hole where they pitch themselves. They find out what, a, um, you know, a network or whoever needs for the pilot season or, you know, what they're looking for as a whole in their programming. They develop it. They shoot it. They add, they do all the things they said. And then when they wrap that project, whether it's like a, you know, a season of something or just like a, a film, mm-hmm. now they're trying to find the next thing. But in that finding, the pitching, the getting, there's a big gap. And they're like, if we had someone who was out finding the work for us or just going and and handling those relationships, taking those meetings, going to say, hey, okay, so are you looking for, what are you looking for? Are you looking for kids shows for something? They like, we wouldn't have droughts in between. And sometimes that's what happens when we refuse to just outsource. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just the outsource. It's like, look, you are the creative. You know what I mean? You can take a lot of meetings, but you can't take every one because you're in the middle of production, right? Yep. 
I think we, but I think we, we dealt with that with Mike J. Like we, mm-hmm. we wrapped old head, and then it was like shoot. And I mean, well, we was filming it, shooting a movie, but it's like <laughs> we. I'm thinking like a lot of the post production stuff didn't have this show didn't have to pause as long as it did. Yeah, if we had more hands into post production, and mm-hmm. you know, so it's like it's a whole thing, child. Yeah, it's just it's infrastructure. Um, I think even that like talking to like in creative, I I also had to. Thought and let me know if y'all like this. Creative people, we need exactly, people. exactly. You need you need people to help maintain the day to day while you're doing things. And I think you know, being entrepreneurs, being solo creatives, we get so caught up and we have to do everything. And like you said, like it's okay to outsource or it's okay to automate things. I think yep. <clears throat> taking action has been like the biggest, has been one of the biggest improvements for us. It's like okay, we said we want to have this person on the podcast. Let's send an email real quick. Let's ask yep. them or let's let's schedule them. You know, we scheduled three people in <laughs> like four days. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it's just been, it's been really cool to like, to, to challenge yourself to take action. And any creatives listening to this, like really challenge yourself and say, you know what? I, this, I, this task may take me an hour, but I'm going to do it. And shoot, it might take you five minutes. It might take you like 25 minutes. Just do the thing you've been thinking about. Just try it and just see what happens and see what your results are. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it's killing me to even say this because it is, it's like, it's just my, I'm a Virgo. That's what we do. We're tedious. <laughs> we're pattern matchers. We like, you know, but it's like, there was a saying someone told me a while ago, it was like, done is better than perfect. A hundred percent. You know? And, you know, sometimes checking, you you do want to take, get a list, check it twice. And then yeah. it's like, all right, now go. You know what I mean? Stop, stop the internal critical parent that you feel like, oh, it's judging or, you know, it's just like, just act. Let's go. You know? And you'll never get um, to your greatest act unless you get all the whack acts out the way. <laughs> Listen, and even if it's just like, even when you're at a, a level, sometimes just like overthinking and like, oh, I want to make it perfect. And I just want to make sure, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people, even if you're not necessarily a uh, practicing creative, like yeah. you're creative adjacent, sometimes even, you know, it's when you're at work, sending an email yeah. and how much you might even check what you're saying in the email, make it clear. Sometimes it's like, it's, you could have sent eight emails in the time it yeah. took to do two because you're just overthinking. Yeah. You know? And I, I mean, in my younger days, um, oh, much younger. I'm trying to think. I, I think I was a little bit, no, I was younger than you. Cause I'm thinking it was more than 10 years ago. Um, I, I remember I like looked at this email, like, um, it was like fast company or something. It's talking about how sometimes when you know, you're, the formal, the long formal email, of all the mm-hmm. things. But then people, the higher up, the more senior, a lot of times the emails get very short. Their Super. response isn't, hi, good day. I'm good and you well. They'll just be like, okay, we'll do. You know, it's yeah. just like, cause, cause it's, it's, cause it's more important to communicate it right now versus, you know, all the formalities. Right. And yeah. Um, yeah. I say every CEO I've worked with has not, even sent grammatically correct emails. It'd be like, thanks, shorthand, T-H-N-X. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's what yeah. we do. And, and you're like, I don't want to like play myself and be too too informal, too casual. Yeah. But sometimes you're like, I can't, it's, it's no point in being overly formal at all. Nah. You know? Nah. So, at yeah. All. Not at all. So okay. what else is going on in, the, in your week? Man, other than that... I want to say nothing really like that. Those were like my big like moments. I'm really excited. I was like I said, I've been telling y'all like I'm really excited about being creative, like being behind the camera. So for the longest, and this is goes to like younger me, I always swore like you know what, I'm never gonna get from behind the camera. Like I'm not gonna be the person who's actually recording. Videography is never my thing. And I tell you, I've picked up a camera and I've started really like capturing stuff and like doing more of that work. I'm yeah. actually pretty good. At it. I got a little eye. I got a little eye on me. You feel me? I got a little eye yeah. on me. So I'm just I'm really doing a lot of things that I before wouldn't be comfortable with, and it's making me more creative. And I'm learning a lot more about myself. So that's that's really kind of kind of been it for me as far as like getting through this week. Honestly, I'm happy to make it to another one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> happy to make Listen, it to another one. That's for sure. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. I right, so you know, I mean, I think everybody's talking about the one big, the big game, and I'm not gonna lie, I got FOMO because <laughs> I be wanting to jump on a plane and go everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like um, the Olympics, man. Oh, the Olympics, yeah. the Olympics, the Olympics. 
So we gonna we definitely want, we want to give y'all like uh I guess your popular topics. We want to take a creative approach. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We want to make sure we cover the things that you know, not just the sport itself, but what people are talking about creatively from all these events. And there have been a a, a few different things that have stood out, especially um, I think we both were talking about earlier. Telfar doing those opening ceremony. Um, they were definitely like, like, like I want to call it like traditional garbs or, or, or dresses or, or, or attire. Well, well, no, he it wasn't just for Liberia. It, he oh wow, all their uniforms even. Wow, he did all the uniforms too. Yeah, designed That's all incredible. of them. So like That's with the incredible. track and field team, and I believe all the sports that they're in, he mm-hmm. he's like designed their uniforms. That's an amazing opportunity. Let me, let me double check that. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna fact check ourselves, but that's that's an incredible opportunity. That 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 goes like that's African American, that's Black branding, that's that's very much Black supporting Black, and you know we support everything Black <laughs> around here, around these parts, for sure, for sure. I I, I when I saw the uh, the the Africa uh, collars, yeah. I was like, that's that was incredible. That was absolutely that was incredible. Real fly, real fly. Oh, so they're even doing a well. I mean, that's just good marketing. He's yeah. even doing a drop. Is he? Yeah, of what people could like buy. Not so much performance wear, mm-hmm. but like cozy or like tees and sweatshirts. Um, fire. Yeah, boxy fit. They say like um twenty twenty four. Let me see Liberia. On um, wow. it's really cool because you know he's a Liberian American. Yeah, yeah. So that's like really really dope. Um, that's a that's that's huge. I mean, there's a lot of really great brand partnerships and stuff coming because I think, um, like, it's I think for like a lot of undergarments, yeah, Skims is like doing all the Team USA stuff. Wow, that's a yeah. big, that's a big deal too. That's a big deal. You know what I mean? Like wow. they just, it's it's just the crossover marketing for the Olympics has been like amazing. Like, did you know like Louis Vuitton has a heavy hand in with it this year? So like, I they know. Have, but, I said, did they didn't they open the hotel in Paris? Like they're trying to get like more involved because of that. Maybe I think I do know that Louis. I thought Louis was going to do a hotel, but they um. I'll look it up while you while you keep going. Yeah, they have like the um the trophy case. So for all the medals, they have this mm. huge Louis Vuitton trunk with all these like sub drawers for all the like the um trophy cases, and I believe all the medalists yeah. get a like a, a special case. Wow. It's like Louis Vuitton designed for their yeah. medals to go into. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah, yeah they did so. do the hotel in Paris. So yeah, that's actually really crazy. But yeah, as far as the Olympics, um, I, you know, I, I do think this about like, you know, they had so much great creative marketing, the commercials mm. for yeah. sure. Like the commercials are really, really great. Mm. And, um, I guess it's just like, you know, when people go to the Super Bowl and you have to be ready that. for both outcomes mm-hmm. and you got to have T-shirts for both teams. Mm-hmm. Because when I tell you those commercials and those campaigns are ready for mm-hmm. after the victory and like, um, yeah, man, live, live sports footage and like the outcomes of it and the preparedness of the producers. Like, man, I take my hat off to them. Mm-hmm. Of being prepared 100%. and just like, you know, because you know how it is like live producers, like switch the camera A, da da da, mm-hmm. go voiceover, go, you know, and pipe to that feed, and especially how in between breaks they switch in between sports. But um, I wonder if it's a thing, because, you know, some of my friends, I, I talked about it to them, and I feel like that's the thing, like they always talk about, like with musicians and athletes, and like, especially like rappers, they say like all rappers would have be like pro ball players yeah. or wish they could have been and yeah. most pro ball players wish they could have been like rock rappers. stars or yeah. rappers right but it's crazy because maybe it's the level of arts and athletics we understand difficulty mm. and how good you have to actually be for something to either sound good or to compete on a high level how yeah. a person like as an athlete you have to be extremely good to make it to the league or the olympics yeah. And then with music or anything art, it's like you you're very practiced. You are you have great taste. You yeah. know what I mean to have things sound great and be great in the difficulty of doing certain things. Because I get teary eyed at the Olympics all the time. <laughs> Why? Why you get teary eyed? Every time when they like compete and like I damn near when they when like the gymnasts when they stick a landing yeah. 
Like yeah. when they stick it, there's no bounce. Nah. I'll be like, yes, I, I, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and I get a little, I get a little, a little bit of teary because I'll be happy for them. Yeah. And then yeah. when they hit gold or you know what I mean. Yeah. I'd be like, I know that's right. You you yeah. was practicing stuff for four years, like four mm-hmm. years led to this mm-hmm. moment. Like mm-hmm. I really get teary eyed. Like, and even before like the, all the qualifiers to the Olympics with Shikari, I was like, yeah, like that's right, girl. They ain't believe Especially with you. her story, yeah, her story yes. by itself. Like, I feel like again, rooting for everybody black, but Shikari really overcame a lot. Like her journey to this point has been crazy. I haven't watched a sprint on Netflix that talks about it. But yeah. I want to, our sprinter, either sprint or sprinter. I want to check it out because it does talk about her story a little bit and going to Olympics and getting to where she is now. But like that, you're right. Like I, I, I do feel that same way. And it's um, even when you related like you know our athletics to creativity, I think about like being an ex athlete myself. Like I, it's 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 pretty it's pretty actually. I never thought about it, but it's just, it's like repetition. It's like the same reps. Like when you practice something, I, so I played baseball. It's like you you field a hundred ground balls, you know, you get better. You might get like one percent better. I think same thing goes for creativity. You make a hundred videos, you know, you're one percent better at that point. So it's like kind of putting the same kind of repetition. And um my uh my line brother, my Kanan, shout out Kanan, he actually got a chance to um participate and try to go to the Olympics for wrestling. So he's like a world class wrestler. The kid is the kid is crazy strong, crazy talented. Um but um, I remember he like, went to the facility, had trained at the facility. He was in like, I think it's in like Iowa, don't quote me, somewhere in the Midwest. But he was there for like a month. And we were like, yo, are you all right? Like, are you good out here? And he was like, yeah, I'm at the Olympic training facility. They got a lot of stuff going on, but their training is super intense. So for them to get to this point and, you know, execute at that level with that pressure, knowing you got one moment, it's really impressive. It's really, really impressive. Yeah. And in this, in the competition, it's like, like, you know, just for that, mm-hmm. that one part. Um, one of my friends, I gotta check on it, like who's competing for breakdancing. Oh wow. So one of my friends, um, it was my classmate in the same cohort as me and Tony at mm-hmm. um IHHE Institute mm-hmm. for Hip Hop Entrepreneurship, our um cohort member friend Ben. Um, he goes by Box One, like B O X W O N That's fire. as a breakdancer. Yeah. And he um he was going to the Olympics in twenty twenty when it was gonna wow. be in Japan. Yeah. But then COVID. COVID, dang. Yeah, so I don't know if he is. I don't. I don't know who's on the roster for like yeah. right now. But I just was like, wow, because they were looking at like pushing it back. But it's still, you know, even after that, doesn't matter. You still got to do all the qualifying, you know, competitions. Mm-hmm. And I, I had looked on his page the other day because I don't know when um the breakdancing competition starts for the Olympics. Um, yeah. but it's it'll be their first year. But twenty twenty, Japan was supposed to be. So we were like hype, like, dog, you made it to the Olympics, That's you know crazy. what I mean? And you're going to represent, you yeah. know, breakdancing is an American import. Like it was made here. So it was like, it would have been dope, like a boy right from North Philly. But That's fire. I think Ben, I from, I like- think ben from North Philly, yeah. Uh, so that's 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 really far. I, I always like I always wanted to like have the Olympic Village experience and like really just kind of like be with all the countries. People like it's really cool on TikTok now. Like now that we have social media and we can kind of be in those like um be in those events with the athletes. A lot of them are making TikToks talking about what it's like being there. It seems really dope. You get to be with athletes from across the world and everybody's experience is different and they're all at like an Olympic level. So it's like you're hanging out with the best of the best. So I can only imagine how dope that is. Except for USA basketball, <laughs> they have their own place. To hang out. <laughs> they ain't going to talk at the top of the yeah, top. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. and you know what? Shout out! That was that was cool. Like, you know, South Sudan. They, they oh, it's, yeah. they, it, it's such a short time. They just became an yeah. independent nation. You know, yep. one of my friends though was like, "Yeah, they got a chance." I said, "Come on, stop." Mm. Hey, I mean, mm. they're they're great to compete on that level. Yeah. Like, amazing. Yeah. But I said. Against yeah. USA, like come on now, it's they Team gave USA. Us a run. They did give like, us they a, gave run. a run, but I just still was like, it's Team USA, bro. Yeah. Like, come on, That's you the know. Best. Yeah, yeah. I they to, um, we, I gotta make sure that I shout out my um uh, my homie Davon Reed. So Davon and I went to high school together. He's playing the Olympic team for Puerto Rico, and oh. um, they actually play Team USA next. And that, and that boy is a his journey in athletics is incredible. He played at U Miami. He got drafted. Played at NBA for a little bit. Played overseas. And now he's playing for uh, representing his country, Puerto Rico. I just got to give him a shout out. You know, it's amazing. I'm happy to say I know an Olympian. You know what I'm saying? So just shout out him. Oh, um, but speaking of how you said, like, with, like, the, the Netflix doc, like, all the docs yeah. that came out 
boy, I tell you, cross media is something like they, yeah. it's, it's like, cause even my, one of my friends, she was like, yeah, like, um, I think it was Simone Biles has a documentary and, you know, yeah. all the docs that are attached to the Olympic athletes that came mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. It's just been amazing cross media. Like it's, we're just looking at it on marketing on the highest, highest, highest level, you know, uh-huh. like of just setting it up, teeing it out. So he, if, people who really watch or if you're like, oh, I'm looking for something to watch because a lot of people who they, they cruise Netflix looking for stuff. And even if they weren't before now, they're like really emotionally engaged yeah. and invested in like the athlete's story, their personal story in their journey. And um, I wonder if that was what t- uh, turned the tide for Shikari outside of people realizing that all their criticism was ridiculous about yeah. her. Like, I will say she did a good job turning changing her own narrative too, like being able to say like you know people said all this about me. I was really going through something. I'm really putting my foot down and, and making it happen. Like I, even in her interviews when she was doing the qualifiers, she really was like telling her controlling her narrative, which is super important. Super important. Um, and the crazy part is that there's so many people in media, especially PR people, who will try to they'll try to get you to run from stuff. And it's like, yeah. man, you gotta face the world. You mm-hmm. you'll you'll never. Yeah, you'll never win them by running from confronting the questions that a lot of people might have. But I'm glad that she she didn't like act apologetic. It's like, come on, grow up. Like, you know what I mean? Like they they were just unnecessarily hard on her and we know why. You know? Yeah. We know why. But it's like amazing to see her. And it, it was even the um I saw a post, it was like this article that they were like some elite group of scientists and they were doing like kind of like a theoretical Oh, practice yep. about how you know she's the fastest woman in the world but based on you know her velocity the way what she's running they said she could technically run on water yeah. they're like she could walk shikari could walk on water she could run on the water she could just go in the ocean and they were trying to like figure out the formula of like how long could she run before she would eventually but it's like that's different you know what i mean she out here setting incredible. records man that's like yeah. Boy, she's she's amazing. Man, we amazing. gotta wish them the best because they I think they start this weekend. Uh, track and field starts this weekend. Man, listen, all that. Um so yeah. Like, which one to jump into next? <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. I mean the opening ceremony, like like it was a lot of okay, there was a lot of like um what do we say? Controversy oh, right, supposedly right, yeah. with the opening ceremony, but mm. Because people said it was like the first supper, but it's or the last supper, yeah. duh. I'm a bit like the last supper, but the truth is, is it was really Bacchanal, like the Olympic ceremony is Greek, you know? Yeah, they're like, yeah. it's, it's like, although y'all might think it was, they're like, that's not it. It yeah. wasn't making a mockery. And that's why it was kind of like sexual and mm-hmm. decadent. And, you know, we got to remember like Europe is different. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? As far as in, I guess like censorship or like how sensuality and sexuality is seen. Yeah. Um, they're a lot more free in those mm-hmm. ways. Um, not as much with like the gratuitous violence that we show on TV, you know, um, but they're a lot more free, but they're like, this is, it's the Olympics. It's the Greek games. It's mm-hmm. Greek tradition. You know what I mean? The Olympians and it's like the Greek gods. And then there was Bacchanal and, um, they're like, this was a whole other thing, but they did apologize. Like if you thought, if you mm. thought we were making a mockery and if you were offended, we're sorry. But I guess they just didn't straddle a line saying, but that's not what was depicted. Like that's not yeah. what we were going for, but maybe they did. They just, the edited statement just didn't include their full statement. Like, you know, cause people, I didn't get that deep in it. Cause I was just like, come on y'all. Like, I just, I, I feel like it's the educational gap too. I feel like in America, we really don't know much. And I, I hate to, I hate to say it like that, but like, they really like uh, European countries do a lot more educating and they give you a lot more like history of kind of the stuff they have going on. I can definitely see from an American lens how we think it's one thing and it can be something completely different depicted. Yeah. Um, so there's there's always that. But I thought it was really crazy to have everybody coming in on boats. I was like, that's so wild. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. But you know what? I saw a post where a person was like, um, they paid sixteen hundred dollars for that ticket. Yeah, in their view. Mm-hmm. And it's almost one of them things where it's like, man, it's way better to watch at home or at mm-hmm. TV because they're just watching them from all the far and they're like, oh, this is good. Mm-hmm. While we're seeing close ups and zoom ins and we're, yep, you know, yep. they're watching and they're like, oh, okay. They probably like use their phone and zoom in. Like, well, who's that? <laughs> who's that over there? Yeah. It's kind of like I thought about it because I, you know, I'm a seat snob at the concerts. I do yeah. not like to be far. 
And some yeah. people love a sweet. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. sweets are cool, but you're so far from the concert. You yeah. can't see as much, you know? So that would that would have killed me. Boy, mm -hmm. I'd have been like, we ain't standing in the rain and I could not see nothing. And it was okay. a good rain too. It wasn't like a little rain. It was like it was it was rain Boy, for sure. Yeah. So you're out there getting wet. Can't even see who you want to see. Yeah, I'd have been like, okay, the weather ain't the fault, but dang, they, they is all the way across the river. Like, mm. wow, <laughs> you know? Mm. But it was cool. It was cool to see. I mean, big production. Um, it was a long. I, just, I never knew the it opening was ceremony was that long, but yeah. it was trailing all also, through Paris. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, they were trailing all through Paris, which I thought was like, I think that is that traditional for every uh, Olympics to go through like the entire city? I don't know. Because I'm like, I don't remember ever what I guess this is the most invested a lot of us have been like I don't remember watching the opening ceremony for a lot of the Olympics um so last one was it Tokyo when, COVID. When it, huh so the last one was Tokyo and that was COVID so there wasn't really much happening no they didn't do it at all I don't believe I think it was canceled no no they, they had it I think it was very limited though I want to I want to wow. see it happen it was just super limited it's it's just interesting because I'm like well we're going to see the, when it comes here what's going to you know, in American city, what what's going to be the production for the opening ceremonies? It'll be interesting. I don't. Gotta be. I would say if you have in LA, you gotta have Kendrick. You gotta have Kendrick there. You might as well just. Yeah, you know. but you but you see how that is like very regional. Like Paris was leaning into Paris, yeah. right? Yeah. So I guess that is it. It's like you know what? Yeah, we gonna we gonna do a LA thing, and when your city gets it, then you do your thing. You know. I will say I think that's why also Snoop is there. Snoop has been all over the Olympics this year. Yeah. I think he's really taking notes for next year to be kind of like an ambassador for the for the city. Maybe I just, I just know he did some commentating. I think him and Kevin Hart before yeah. they had yeah. their show on Peacock or whatever, and it was cool. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's really dope to see. They, oh, and even Flavor Flav's um, sponsoring the um, women's water polo team. Like, that's, like, super dope, too. That's very cool. Um, also, super dope cross-branding was super cool. Yeah, so it's like the, the Olympics are so heavily relying on the creative community. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, athletes. Well, I'm not athletes. I'm sorry, performers. Yep. And artists. Like, they're so heavily leaning on them to lend their branding mm -hmm. and their brand appeal to it which I don't know if we've ever seen it in this way before. Like mm -hmm. it's really a lot of like crossover. So that, I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Now what did I like, what did we, what did we watching this week? You said you was watching some stuff. Yeah. So I gotta, so I have, I'm gonna circle back. Cause I know last week I talked about Supercell and only getting like, I have to say three episodes in. I have finished Supercell and I would like to let y'all know if y'all have not seen it, watch it. If you like superheroes, watch it. If you like black people with superpowers, watch it if you like seeing black people on the screen and only really seeing black people on the screen watch it it's just dope and it is a really good story and i don't want to spoil it too much but um it really puts things into perspective and the main character michael i would love to know everybody's thoughts on if you would have told your fiance about what the date means Bro. yeah no nah, i'm not i'm not going to spoil it I'm going to just say, like, if y'all if would have told, and if y'all don't watch it by the next time I talk about it, I'm going to just foil it. But I just want to know what y'all what y'all, what y'all think, if you would have told the fiance about what the date means or not. And that's all. You but. you tapped on something where you said if you want to watch something where it's, like, pretty much only black people on it. Yeah. Man, I this is this is so beside the point. But, like, you know, it's it's like in this dating world, which I am <laughs> reluctantly in, kind of, you know, a date when I... Like when, I, when I meet somebody I like, you know, yeah. or it seemed like all the people, I ain't gonna say that because I, I do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to say it seemed like the, the guys that I like don't like me back or they oh. just not single, you know, they be occupied. Um, yeah, because I just, some people I, just, I see, I, I wish, you know, but I don't know. But I met this one guy and you know, you just have a feeling. I think everybody goes there where you just have a feeling and you're like, it's nothing out from outside nothing wrong with this person they're attractive yeah. whatever but he approached me i was out and then he like approached me and he was like he knew of me for a while had a you know i had a crush on you for years and i'm like oh really i'm like oh you know okay um and know a couple of mutual people or whatever and then he's like you know always look like what do you do and i was like oh, i'm you know primarily film but creative you know work creative consultant and stuff and he was like Oh, and then he, you know, the thing that most people try to ask, what's your favorite movie, right? Mm. And then it's like, 
a lot of us don't have a favorite movie or we have a hands down. And sometimes the movie we like is our favorite is not something people have seen. Um, Mm -hmm. But we're like, okay. Like I was like, you know, not so much one. I'm like, I have a few, you know, and then then there's always people don't get it. We always have a couple of films that are like popcorny that like, if it's on, we're going to watch it. You know what I mean? We're going to turn to it every time. But I was like, not so much. And I was like, oh, and he was like, oh, because some of my favorite films and he named a few. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen it. Who's that star? And he says, right. And then I'm like, oh, I can't say I remember. Like, and then I was like, um, he named like four movies. Yeah. And I said, that's interesting. He said, what's interesting? I said, all your favorite films don't have black people in them. Ooh. You're black. And he was like, oh, I never thought about that. And I, it's it's funny because I already had like that like my gut was like yeah I don't think so like maybe maybe I mean he's attractive it was wrong because sometimes I'd be thinking maybe it's me maybe I pick wrong you know yeah. and then I was like nah yeah nah like I was just like how do all your films not have black people like mm. they, they're your favorite I said it's just interesting I said that what are all the films that represent you there's, there's not one black person yeah. in the movie and he was like damn and then. I like we we had a phone conversation. Um, yeah, like it's one. I maybe I don't even think we've had two. Maybe two phone conversations, but I still was having that feeling in my gut. Like something says no, you know. And I try not to go against that because like some of the, the worst dating experiences have been when I like my gut was like nah, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's this group on Facebook <laughs> that I ended up. I I kind of got in it because a mutual guy friend of mine. There was a joke that he like he's in that group like as far as they're not in it but it's called like are we dating the same guy uh, okay. and women women say like hey are you dating him and it's, it's to get tea either it. it's, it's to a say Facebook like group? yeah it's, it's even and they have it for every city just about and it's a it's a wow. group and it's really useful and it's women so, of all races fellas, and backgrounds if you're listening, huh? fellas, if you're listening she's just Listen, giving y'all she giving you, y'all some, you, some free game here. You ain't gonna get you ain't gonna be let into it. They ain't gonna let you in. That's one thing. Cause you gotta, you know, you gotta get let in. They ain't gonna let yeah. you in. But they'll show, like, hey, have you dated this guy? Like, this is his name, this is the city. And they'll give tea. Sometimes they'll be like, Wow, I don't know much. He's a great guy. Or some girls be like, He's a great guy. I dated him, but it just no sparks. And then sometimes they're like, Beware, he's dangerous. He's wow. a you know, domestic abuser, he's this, he's Jeez. that, you know. So there's all types of things where they say, oh, I, he tried to get sexual real fast. So one night I just, cause I was thinking like, huh, am I just not interested in almost anyone? And then except for one, my one friend, but he, I don't know what happened with that, but I was like, um, maybe. And I said, some says no. And I just said, huh, this was, I'm talking about weeks after we yeah. had that conversation. I said, yeah, because he had been hitting me up, like, you want to go out, you want to go out. And I could, I'm, I'm bad. Sometimes I could just like fall off the thread, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I said, check that. And he was on there. What and is it? Was it? Like a, it was like a strong six women on there. They say he, um, it was all, F, all ethnicity. So it's like, oh boy, you ain't got mm. no type. And some, it was a couple that was like, hmm. it's like, oh, he really ain't got no type. Mm. Overly aggressive. Um, mm. He, one was like they went out and something with the behavior was a little off or something like but more like she thought it was like all he I mean with me the one phone conversation we had I just felt like he just wanted to talk about himself and Mm. that he thought the conversation was good because I let him talk about himself Mm. but the truth is I was in another city and sleepy so I was just like in a hotel room and I fell asleep (laughs) at one point on the phone I don't think he noticed (laughs) Lord, I was like scary. real jet lag, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, once she was like, um, he, they went out or whatever. And then like two weeks later, he was like engaged or something to someone. So yeah, it was just, it seemed like a hot mess. That's but wild. that with like not having, and it's okay to like, you know, their various stuff, but it was just the, he was just so like, oh, I just love it. And it's like the age of the gentleman. I was just like. Something says something's wrong there. Something's something a little right. off, like you know, because I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me mm-hmm. let me you 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 brought up a thing in my brain where I'm thinking yeah. now. When was your first experience realizing like 
oh, there's this black actor or this black, you could say voice character um, that you kind of associated with, like, you know, are you related to on television, on the screen? Like, what were you watching? You were like, oh man, like, okay, this is a black character. I, I understand this black character. This black character and me has something in common, if that makes sense. That's hard for me because no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It was really early. Um, because I was about to say, I grew up with like pretty much all black people on TV. We're talking mm. about like Cosby show. And, you yeah. know, um, of course, I think all kids like my age, we related to Rudy on the mm. Cosby show okay. for sure. Because okay. it was like, she's the little, she's this little kid, the little sister, you know, yeah. um, even though she was like a few years older than me. But I think um, it was a few shows. There was a show called, not It's a Living. Was it It's a Living and Cheryl Lee Ralph was mm -hmm. on it, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was the like the black character on it. Yeah, It's a Living. I I'm like, did that come out before? Yep, that was nineteen eighty. And they were like, I think they were like like a hotel or a restaurant or something like that. Yeah. Um and with that, she was like one of the first people that I saw and was like, wow. Cause it was like the character, black character, but I wow. hard to say. Cause I grew up with so much media at that time yeah. um, where there were, I think all, I think everybody has that thing where you, you, you see that character and you attach yourself to it. Yeah. There wasn't, there weren't really, how could I say? There weren't really kids shows, but outside of Sesame street. Right. Yeah. Um, there weren't too many shows geared towards kids outside of like Sesame Street where it would be just like primarily black characters, like not narrative stuff that I remember. Um, but pretty much any black character. I remember um, <laughs> Night Court, Night Court yeah. and um, Bumper Robinson, his okay. character, he played like a kid on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I remember even LA Law. I mean, I was young, man. I was okay. three watching a show called LA Law <laughs> and I had a crush on Blair Underwood and I was three. So my mom Blair. used to watch the show and I used to stay uh, up and watch it with her because I thought he was so fine. Like I was three. That's why sometimes people would be like, no, they say I'd be like, sexuality is not a choice. I mean like because I was three years old with a crush on a like, grown man. Like, come on. I went to my first movie I saw in the movie theater yeah. was Crush Groove. Crush Groove, what's that? Crush Groove, everybody. You don't know, Crush Groove was a hip hop movie and it was like telling the story of death, the founding of Def Jam. Oh, really? Yeah, and Blair Underwood played like Russell Simmons' character, even though Russell uh, Simmons has a cameo in the movie. Wow, that's crazy. And I begged to see that movie because Blair Underwood was in it. <laughs> Oh, wow. That was the very first movie I saw in movie theaters. And I remember Sheila E. played his girlfriend or something, like a woman like who he gets with in it. Yeah. And I always remember I fell asleep during the love scene because yeah. as they started kissing and like they was getting in the bed, my mom was like, cover your eyes. And I covered my eyes. And the next thing yeah. I was asleep and the movie was, oh, I was waking up. Dang. I guess I was tired or whatever. But I saw that. That was the first movie I saw in theaters. I was like maybe four. Jeez. And then the second okay. movie I saw was the Care Bears movie. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> I mean, like hip hop is in my soul. Like, yeah. oh, I had a crush on that man. <laughs> so, what was the first yeah. um media that you saw that you decided, like, or you that you saw a black character and you attached, like, like so, you were like, wow, this is going, this is going, this is kind of similar, not similar, but um, so Cart Nickelodeon was just becoming like a big deal when I was younger. So, like, we had just got that Nickelodeon era where it was, like, a bunch of, like, you know, they had, like, uh, TLC doing the intros and stuff like that. Yes. Um, it was, like, 90s R&B doing all the intros, all their, their shows. That's but, all that. Uh, yeah. So, like, so Susie Carmichael on the Rugrats, she was a girl, mm -hmm. but her family, you know, she had, like, a, she had a, had a black family. And Cree Summers, so I know the voice actor for Susie Carmichael is Cree Summers. And I was just like, oh, this little girl and, and my family are kind of similar. That's really cool. Like she had her brothers were backwards baseball caps, had like Jays on and like basketball jerseys. That was so cool. And then I want to say, obviously, Keaton and Kel, they had their own TV show. It was like, yo, these are, you know, I want to do it. Like, how do I, how can I be that? You know what I'm saying? And then um, I'm trying to think. Uh, when I got older, 
it was still it was hard because we went we had the MTV we're the MTV era. So like we had like a lot like Dawson's Creek. We had uh oh, yeah. what's the other the other big MTV show that was on? Um nine oh two one oh uh that was bunch Fox. Of, like, no, I'm trying to th- it, it wasn't it's it's an MTV show where it was like um it started like the the beginning of reality TV, but it was a lot of like just songs oh. and it was, yeah, um, real world, world rules. Yeah, so it was a, a lot of that, and it was it wasn't as much color. It wasn't much black people on those until later on, but you know, it was it was, it was tons of that. But fun fact, and this is what I was going to tell you. So apparently, Blair Underwood and I are related. Um, wow. I wish I wish I would have kept my grandma on the phone. So my grandma goes to this family reunion a couple years back um, when I was younger, and she comes back and she's like, "Yeah, y'all know Blair Underwood," and we're like, "I never. I, I'm young. I don't know the dude this." My mom was like, yeah, he's the, the actor. My grandma was like, oh, yeah, he was at the family reunion. He, he, I met him. He was a nice guy and everything. So I was like, we're related? She was like, it's got to be somebody's cousin or something like that. But he'd be at our family reunions, allegedly. <laughs> I know you knew who he... You had to know who he was from. Set it off. Yeah, so I, the first the first time I saw Blair into it, I, I recognized him and was like, oh, I know this person was... um, uh, Oh, my gosh. Malibu's Most Wanted. Okay. He was in Malibu's was one, and I was like, "Oh, that's Blair Underwood." <laughs> but I, I had seen him and set it off. I had seen him in films prior and been like, "This guy looks mad familiar." But that was the first film where I was like consciously like, "I wonder who these people are." Well, if you're and... related to him, you need to connect with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> you in the business? You, you tell me, I mean? right? I got I got to yeah. figure out who the relative is just to do like a little intro, so I can say, "Okay, listen, Blair, this is what we gonna do." But yeah, nah, apparently we're related. But yeah, I want to say Chris Summers, Susie Carmichael, Kenan and Kel. Those were like my big first, like, okay, I like this. This is this is where I want to be. And that kind of, yeah. you know, started it for me. Yeah. Because that was like the early, early days. And then, of yeah, course, when you get 90s. older and I was, man, a different world. Yeah. It was like, yeah, Once... Summer as Freddie, you know. Yes. The world was everything. 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 I mean, everything. Kid, it just, that was just a great era, you know, yeah. of good, like, storylines that it didn't try to be sensationalized just to be sensationalized and yeah. even like i started watching me and my son had when grownish first came out we tried to you know we watched that yeah and my son because we like marathon watched a different world and in 2021 he was in the hospital a lot yeah. and then that was when we he finally turned like in the summer he went over that threshold like now you 21 and moved him from chop to the adult hospital and mostly also yeah. because all his specialists were next door at upenn so yeah. they moved him there. So I would have to leave at night and go home, especially because it was like COVID and everything. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't be there all day. So when I would come, we was like mar- watch, marathon watching. I'm a different world. So when Gronish came on, his main complaint, we didn't, we didn't end up, he didn't, he wasn't interested past season one. He was like, when do they ever go to class? <laughs> he was like, this whole show is all about, he said, it's like all about like kind of girl stuff and dating drama. Yeah. He said, and that's cool. He was like, I just felt like a different world shows so much more. But, um, yeah. Get ready for finals and cramming and like, you know, throwing, even like throwing parties, friend drama. And, you know, he just felt like it was more well-rounded, which was true. My biggest thing with Grownish was to me, it was too polished. I was yeah. just like, so y'all were new clothes all the time. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was a Gen Z version of college. Like, yeah. if, you, if you really think about it, it was like a Gen Z version of college. They never had a hair out of place. They were always in fresh, brand new clothes where I'm like, there were certain items of characters that you saw a few times over their mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. It, is, it just looked way more real and like mm-hmm. real everyday life. And I'm just like, I, I, I feel bad sometimes for like some of the younger people with like this whole, yeah. I mean, there are some influencers who are, who are very real, who aren't about yep. that, but I'm like, everything can't be aesthetics. I think just it, be- it, it, you got to think about the, the growth and development of the black experience too. Cause like, sure. especially going to college at that time and Hillman was at HBCU, no? Yeah. So their, their, their experience is way different than, uh, what was the girl's, what was her name? Um, Zoe. From Zoe, yeah. Yeah. Going to a PWI as an affluent, not affluent, but her parents, you know, a, a, a doctor and a high corporate marketing person, you know, she got a little coin. So her experience is going to be a little bit different. A little coin, but like you waking up for class, you ain't, yeah. you ain't always perfect. Like, I don't nah. care. Like it just was. It just I don't know, but I think that's TV now. Everything yeah, yeah, is bad placement. It's it's over. It's almost over stylized. You know what yeah. I mean? There's like yeah. a lack of I don't know. It's just too too aesthetically driven. It's like yeah. oh come on, you know. But um, you know, but I it seemed 
it seemed like they got more well-rounded as it went on but like you know my son's a dude like he a, he a guy he was just like uh i'm cool i'm, <laughs> I'm cool off that i was like all right <laughs> Like, you know, um, you got any art? Right, so from the week, you got any creative tips, inspiration? Yes. My inspiration for the week for y'all, my creative tips, my inspiration. What I'm going to tell y'all is this. Do the thing you've been putting off because that's the thing that's stopping you from becoming who you need to be. Um, the reason why I say that is because, you know, we all procrastinate, especially as creatives. We want to think about it a million times over, like Amir said earlier in the episode. Do that thing because that is what's stopping you from becoming who you want to be. And trust me, God will take care of the rest. He'll provide and you'll be good to go. So, Amira, please give the people some inspiration, some creative tips <laughs> to hey, give you the week. For real, for real. I say my creative tip is have people, um, keep a keep good people around you mm. who, if and when, they'll, they'll tell you, like, what you're lacking or they'll call you on your bullshit. And even sometimes when you think you see it yourself, because, you know, you could be hard on yourself. Someone who also they'll still give you, and, and sometimes it, sometimes it's that reaffirming thing of what other people see in yourself. Yep. Um, and also when they say, "But you, but you lacking, you slacking, or you not doing the thing," and you know, it just um, so keep people that's gonna keep you honest. You know, mm. they gonna keep you honest, and they not scared. Like I don't know, I'm just like a person who's not averse to conflict. You know what I mean? I'm okay with it. You know, um, so. I don't look to be offended. You know what I mean? So if someone is telling me like, man, but you lunching or like, you know, you could do, I don't look to be like, I can't believe they would say that to me. Or like, I, I'm not often in defense mode, you know, that's just, I'd be like, yeah, I, I know, you know, like, it don't, it don't, it don't, it don't, like, I knew, I'd be knowing when the, the episode is going to record. Yeah. Why I ain't then start then and then do the things and come in already done or, you know, come on. Like, I just know. I, I, I'd i be like, oh, I, yeah, I know you're right. You know what I mean? It's like, don't, yeah, keep people around just going to keep you honest, not people that's going to keep you in the same place, you know. But you also have to be teachable. You have to be um willing to, when people try to keep you accountable, you got to be yeah. willing to receive it, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's my biggest tip inspiration of the week is like check yourself and, and stay open. Stay open. I love that. To criticism. I love that. I love that. Young well sibling syndrome. Young you have to say. <laughs> we are two episodes in the can for our weekly episodes. Um I know coming up we got a pipeline of three interviews coming. We're really excited to share them with you when we record them and get them out there. But we are actively making season three an amazing season. Um, if you guys already don't follow us at Disruptors ITC on social media, um, we'll be updating you guys. And starting August, we got some surprises, some recaps, some past episodes we want to highlight, but really kind of get going with what we got coming up for um, this season. And Mary, want to leave the people with anything before we before we highlight them next time? No, just um, make sure you guys subscribe to us because um, man, we got some good stuff and. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw somebody, and I said, I mean, you said you want to come. I told, I asked you before. You said yes. She said no. I said yes. So, yeah, it's just gonna be good, real good. I love that oh, too. I want to echo it. Y'all see? It. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, I, I think y'all would be so happy to see this too. Yeah. Um, I just want to echo what Amir said. You know, we are content. We love this podcast. We want to continue to grow and be great. And y'all can help us doing that by simply just subscribing and following our pages. That's all we ask. It'll make everything grow. And, it'll, you know, we, we, if you want to see us succeed and see us grow, all you got to do is follow and subscribe. That's all. That's it. That's it. So we it appreciate y'all. And that's to oh, see where, you know, what, what could be better and, you know, all the things. So it's just like, just subscribe. Like, Especially on YouTube, like yes. you don't lose anything or on the pod, pod platforms. It's not like you have, you don't have a public profile that says they follow this many people. It's not like I know IG. Sometimes y'all be scared because y'all don't want to mess up your followers and your following because you, you, it's something about following a bunch of people <laughs> just makes you feel uncool or whatever. Like you don't got to worry about that when pod platforms and or YouTube. So just follow, just subscribe, like just subscribe. It ain't gonna take nothing away from you, you know. Mm -mm. 
we just want to add, add so exactly we just want to add yeah. <laughs> we just want to add so without further ado we appreciate y'all for listening to us again please tune in next time let us know what you think about the episodes again follow us on social media at disruptors at dc subscribe to the youtube mike j uh media and we will look forward to talking to y'all next time peace peace thank you <laughs>